Uh, the things people do for love. Or should I say, the things people do when they think they're in love. Or should I say, the things people will do to marry someone 20 years younger than them, which includes bribing them with PlayStations. But at least Kim has now upgraded to bribing Usman's family with a cow. I mean, all baby girl Lisa brought was a goat, so I can't imagine this goes wrong. His family just wants him to be happy and to have children, so of course they want him to marry a 52-year-old from America. And then also marry someone who can have children, and then keep her and Kim separated for the rest of their lives. That's, that's what everybody wants, right? Anyway, the time has come to introduce Kim to Usman's family, and if they don't approve, then the relationship is over. That is what he has told her. So essentially the relationship is over, but that doesn't stop her from trying to find a good cow to bring. This is crazy. I've never been in anything like this before. This is what I say. This side? Mm -hmm. I love the cow market. Like, I could stay there all day just trying to pet them. I've never petted a cow. I don't need to tell you, cow is cow. I love how she's acting like a cow or a bull is some sort of exotic animal. Oh my god, Usman, what are these called again? I've never seen these before. Do you think I could take one of their eggs home? Do you think I could bribe your mom with one of their eggs? Channel one with this one. To me, is a piece of shit. What? Why, why are you here to buy a cow? Like I'm buying a cow for his mom. No. Because I'm meeting her tomorrow. I assume this is just a custom where Usman lives and it's a really normal thing, but it's funny because when they actually go to meet his family, they just see it as a bribe too. It's like the cow is their backup. If things start to go south, just send in the cow. Kim is like, all right, you don't approve of our marriage? How about if I give you this $500 cow? And Usman's mother's like, uh, I don't care at all. Get out of my house. So, Tazuni ni Eren, Zatapara gana mamana for the first time? She has to take to say, Shan, what about Mama? Take your tie, Erin, your tie, Haka. Yes, yeah, it's your life. The guy who's selling the cow, it's his first time seeing an American, and this is always frustrating to me because they have a terrible impression from the start. It makes me want to be like, oh no, don't worry, not all of us are running around the world bribing people with PlayStations and cows. We don't all have camera crews following us around to capture the cringe, although it's it's getting there. And you can tell how unusual this situation is because there's always people gathered around watching, and if they're lucky enough, they might actually catch a glimpse of Kim throwing a drink at Usman. Where were you on the drink throw of 21? That's a day I'll be telling my grandchildren about. <laughs> You know, I appreciate this guy's optimism because I don't really think she's going to be happy about this. I think his family probably learned their lesson with baby girl Lisa. I, I don't really see this going well. But, you know, now they'll have a goat and a bull. If, if Usman keeps dating people, maybe they could start a whole farm. And this will be the most elaborate way to start a farm in the history of the world. <laughs> Says the woman who spent like $3,500 to get some yammy. Oh, but I guess impressing his family is not worth $500. Come on, Kim, you can get a decent cow. Tomorrow I am going to meet Usman's family. I feel like I'm walking into the lion's den. I'm kind of going in there with a cow and just like, hi, how are you? No plan. And without Usman's mom's approval, he will not marry me at all. Hey, when in doubt, bring a cow. That's that's the old saying, right? But seriously though, I don't exactly understand what Usman's intentions are, and I think he knows well enough that his family is not going to approve of Kim, and it's most likely just going to end right there. I think the entire thing is just going to be banking on the second wife. If he can have a second wife that he has children with, then maybe they'll approve of it. But you know, who am I to judge? I can't stop true love. Nobody can. This is either true love, or Usman just needed an assistant while he was filming his music videos. You know, someone to grab him some soda or something in between takes. So unfortunately, I don't have the clip of her meeting his family, but luckily it wasn't that exciting and it can be explained pretty quickly. They will only approve of their marriage if Usman marries someone from his culture and his religion first. And then they accused her of trying to bribe them, and then Kim started crying and saying that's not who she is even though, you know, their whole relationship was sort of built on a bribe. But, you know, every good, long-lasting relationship begins with a bribe. Just ask anybody who's been married a long time, and they will tell you all about this. So anyway, obviously Kim has issues with being the second wife, as if it would be any different if she was the quote-unquote first wife. I don't even know what to say, to be honest. Like, the bribe thing is what got me. I was thinking when you said that you allow me to get a uh, second wife for me to get children, I was thinking maybe that would touch them. But they just... Turn it upside down. Why would they be touched to know that Kim is desperate enough to marry you even though you're gonna have children with a second wife? It would be one thing if she was clearly okay with it, but she's obviously not and only putting up with it because I think she's just afraid to lose Usman. I don't know why. I mean, scootily poop isn't everything, Kim. You need to think about other things in life too, like bribes and drink throws. Those are important aspects of a relationship too. That I must have married to another before lady marry before marrying me for that purpose. I actually can't go against her. You know I love you, I don't have to tell then, you that. Then it's over. 
I'm not going to be the second wife. I just, I can't. What about the third wife? Because, you know, I'm thinking about marrying a few. You keep saying you don't want to be the second wife, but you never said anything about being the third or the fourth wife. Or, you know, we don't even have to get married. You could just show up once in a while and drop off a new video game or something. My kids are probably going to need toys and things like that. So, you know, if you want to bring something along those lines too, I, I wouldn't complain. And, you know, I hate to be a bother, but I have kind of brought up a Nintendo Switch multiple times at this point, and I haven't really seen anything yet, so... I can't let myself be like that, you know? But do you because think... the whole thing of me marrying me first is to make me the first wife and then have this other woman for children. I think that was a lot, and I respect the fact that she said that, and that's a lot. But for me, I, I, I won't do that. First, second, third, tenth, what, what does it even matter at this point? You know, if he has kids with somebody else, you're going to come second, no matter what. Even if you're the quote-unquote first wife, you're going to come second. In a way, it was like a, his mom was giving me a compromise, but I can't make any more exceptions because I have exactly what I want now, like his love. And I, I feel like the love for he has for me now would change with that. Oh, really? You're telling me that the love you two share would change if he got married and had children? Who would have thought? My favorite part about this is he hasn't even met the woman who is going to be the potential mother of his children yet, so they're just discussing all of this as a hypothetical. He and Kim can't even enjoy their relationship together because they're all hung up on this. And as I just spoke those words, I realized how dumb it is that I would think they would ever enjoy their relationship together. What am I even saying? We're talking about a man who showed more affection to a game console than to his potential wife. Getting the title of the first wife is so important to me because in previous relationships I always came second. Always. I was always pushed to the side. If you will remember from last season when they finally slept in the same bed together, not only was she pushed aside, but he literally built a wall out of pillows between them so that he wouldn't even have to touch her. And I still don't understand how exactly she envisions his relationship with the mother of his children when that happens. Like, what, is she just never gonna look at her, never gonna see her, never gonna see the kids, never gonna talk about it, never gonna see pictures? Good luck. And I'm not gonna let that happen to me again. I don't care if he came here right now and proposed to me with the biggest diamond in the world. I'm not his second. Sorry, I can't. I know my worth. Well, you know, let's just wait and see because something tells me she's going to be proposing to him very soon. So for the last part of this video, we're going to be talking about Big Ed again. And if you want to click out of the video at this point, I wouldn't blame you. I'm even going to wait a few seconds. I'll give you some time to just, just click out. Nobody would blame you. And in fact, I would actually recommend it. So here's your chance. All right, well, if you're still here, I hope you know what you're getting into. So when we last left off, they just had their engagement party, which went exactly as I expected. Liz just took off running and disappeared. She then threw her engagement ring into a bush and proceeded to say that their relationship is over and that she can't do this anymore, which, you know, this is about the ninth or tenth time this has happened, so it's hard to believe. And then she went home to Big Ed so that they could argue with each other drunkenly, which went on for hours. You think I'm having a relationship with someone? You did in the past. No. Liz, when we split up, you Matt. were both men and women. I don't want to argue with you anymore. Show me proof. I don't want to argue with Show you Show me proof, Ed. Honestly, Ed has no right to complain because for the moments that they were broken up, he was hitting on everybody. Everybody. He was trying to get with everyone he could get his grubby little hands on. At the tell-all, he was trying to get sympathy by crying and acting all sad and saying that he's going to therapy now and he's trying to fix himself. And then half the women there were like, dude, you just asked me out backstage. And then Liz heard of this and she was like, well, we were broken up, so it's okay. When we broke up, he always took a girl out every single night. So whatever he throws in my face, I can 100% throw back in his face. That's not toxic at all. That's totally normal. You're gonna think I'm crazy, but I honestly think these two have the most unhealthy relationship on this season. And also, Ed completely cut off contact with his daughter and his mother for this. He is slowly but surely dragging her down to his level. I just can't trust you. Liz, are you a lesbian? Michael, am I gay? I don't know the whole backstory here or why Ed thinks this, but I just find it funny that a woman touched Liz on the arm and now Ed thinks that she's a lesbian. If that isn't the most insecure shit I've ever heard in my life, then I don't know what is. I am not attracted to anything but But the fact that you don't even come to bed anymore, you don't give about me. You can stay up to 5 a.m. You don't come to bed. You don't cuddle with me. The good news for Liz, if you end it with Ed, it can only go uphill. There is no possible way it could go any further downhill. You've reached bedrock. It is really frustrating to see someone beat themselves up like this over Big Ed, of all people. Are you kidding me? Liz, you're the one that got upset and walked away from the restaurant, left me stranded. You drink too much 
and you you just walk start walking home. That's dangerous. I don't need anybody, Ed. The dog is just over here like, hey, can you both shut up? You guys both drink too much. Look at this shelf right here. What are you doing? I gotta work in the morning. I have to be up early. I have a job. I have responsibilities. I put the food on the table in this house and you guys just argue all night. Why do you hang out with people you shouldn't hang out with? I'm not hanging out with anybody because oh, you know what? You don't let me hang out with anybody. Because they're all trashy. You call me fat, you tell me I have a small Whatever. You, Cause you called me fat. I never called you fat. You, yes, you did. This is starting to get out of hand. I don't know how much more of this I can watch. This is one of those things, it's like we're clearly not supposed to be seeing this. This is a very personal argument. They're hurling insults at each other, but they did agree to have camera crews follow them around. So what am I, what else am I gonna do? And you don't have a reason to call people fat, by the way. All I said was this. It makes no sense to go to the gym and then go to 7-Eleven and eat nachos. I don't eat nachos. Yes, you do. No, literally. Yes. Well, you know, it makes more sense to go to the gym than to not go to the gym, regardless of what you're eating. I guess I'll let this one slide because as we all know, Big Ed is the epitome of healthy eating. He is definitely the type of person you wanna look up to when it comes to being healthy. If you ever hire a personal trainer and he looks anything different than Big Ed, I doubt you're gonna make any progress. Anyway, I'm sure you're all edited out by now, so that's it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed and thank you so much for watching. Just a quick reminder, I do have a weekly podcast that we upload every single Thursday. It's available on Apple and Spotify. Spotify. The links will be in the description. And if you enjoy it and you're kind enough to leave a review, we will actually read it on the podcast. Anyway, thank you so much again for watching, and I hope to see you all in the next one. I've never called this fat. I'll drop positive hints, and I know I have to work on myself too, but I've never called her fat. Whatever you say, Ed. Whatever you say.